But what I'll do if Roger is, is okay with this, I think it's actually a very wonderful segue. Um, but yeah, but, but quickly before I go into the survey, uh, the segue, um, we're we're well over and in, well into our break time right now. So if anyone feels like they want to get up and do whatever, like this is, you know, this is no strict conference office. Obviously, we're all friends and colleagues here. Uh, but we will start with the PSA uh, panel in the next uh, 40 minutes. So come and go as you like, but Roger's going to talk for, I think, uh, 15, 20 minutes. Is that right, Roger? Yeah, yeah I'll go fast. <laughs> well, I think it's very, this is a wonderful segue because Luke's talk is about this, imagining this vegan utopia. But as Roger's talk is going to show us, like, I love that Luke got into a lot of the details of, and actual strategies and how we might get there. But Roger's talk is going to demonstrate how some of those barriers are still within our own house. Like we still have a major problem within the animal rights movement, the vegan movement, for instance, even talking about veganism. So I think this is a wonderful segue. And I'll, with that, I will turn it over to Roger. And again, please leave comments and questions in the chat for, for Luke and for the other speakers on the panel. Yeah, just let me say that I won't be offended if you want to use your break time and actually have a break instead of listening uh, to me. So this was, uh, I'm doing a, um, a series called The Vegan Time Tunnel on uh, Vegan, of course, which is a daily um, morning show from North America, which goes out at my time, that's uh, Irish time at uh, 4 p.m. And so uh, number 10 of this time tunnel is the, uh, the move that... Um, the movement is made from vegetarianism or veg claims making or even veg uh, things to actually embracing veganism. So we tend to think now that uh, we often say, well, veganism is now the moral baseline or it's central to everything we do, that kind of notion. And in social movement terms or social movement theory terms, we can say that it's central to our kind of claims making uh, now. Um, I, I was a press officer in the 1980s, did lots and lots of interviews, hundreds of interviews. And I don't remember talking about veganism not once. And I was never asked by a journalist once about veganism. So it was all about single issues. And so the timeline of this, th this is not a kind of attack on anyone. I just want to make that clear. What it is, it's talking about um, a structural issue that the movement wasn't geared up for veganism, even though it was you know, an animal rights uh, movement, not geared up for veganism. So it, it was safer, people thought, to um, talk about vegetarianism. And in fact, some people, and still now a few, will argue that veganism is still a scare word. And so there, there is a kind of timeline from 1990 through to uh, about 2019 in, in this presentation. So we start with vegan outreach, which started um in 1995 and that was uh, animal liberation action at the time uh is famous for giving out the pamphlets and eventually they moved to vegan ones from why vegetarian uh ones um and so this is an interesting thing uh, matt ball co-founder of vegan outreach appeared on the animal rights zone this is 2011 he was asked by tim gaia whether if you start all over again, would he still call it vegan outreach? And basically he said no. And the reason for that is that is that if you use vegan in your name, you're not going to get funding. And so that's basically what he was saying that you know veganism is still putting a lot of people off. And so they wouldn't they wouldn't have done it uh, in that sense. Meanwhile, if we go back to Britain, this is 2010, this is um a talk that uh, Robin Lane gave. Robin Lane took over from Ronnie Lee as the Animal Liberation Front press officer. Uh, but he also uh, ran something called CARF, which was a campaign against leather and fur. And he's also involved with the um, Vegan Society. And he says that um, in 1996, there was a Vegan Society proposal by the members that they would run an annual vegan event for the public. And the, the membership said yes to that, but the vegan society didn't want to do it. They actually said that they didn't want to take on the extra work. And so we have the ironic situation that uh, the proposal for the first um, major vegan event um, in Britain, the vegan society didn't want to do it. And so Robin's organization, CARF, stepped in. And so in 1998, 
it became the first national vegan festival. It became the London Vegan Festival in 2004 because regional um, events uh, came in. So we're only talking about 18 years ago uh, here. If we go back to, um, this is an old friend of mine, Neil Lee used to put together this uh, this magazine, ARC News, and part of it was this activist thing, which you can see in the background there. And it basically told you what was, what was coming up. Uh, and again, the interesting part here, it's very difficult to read, but um, it's saying a, um, a vegetarian rally and picnic uh, in Hyde Park and the National Vegetarian Week. So even though this was an activist um, publication being put out very regularly, veganism was hardly ever mentioned uh, which was interesting archangel they they were more they were more likely to talk about uh, veganism than most uh, this is the real kind of radical end of um, of the movement in that sense it was uh, produced by the people behind the animal liberation front when we go to the more established national groups this is viva and it's interesting if you look right in the top corner i don't know if you can see it it says Vegetarians International Voice for Animals. So that's what Viva means. It's now rebranded as the vegan uh, charity. But they were famous in doing things like offering uh, veggie information. At one point, they had a, um, a vegetarian starter kit, and then they started to have a vegetarian starter kit as well as a vegan starter kit. And then you see... In the end, they ended up being kind of like a mix. Th through the kind of late 90s, they ended up being a mix. There's a lot of vegetarian things going on. And then you'd throw in vegan things. The thing about the, the vegan material at this point, and um, you know, we're coming up to this century at this stage, is that it was all usually about food. In fact, even vegan outreach, their first focus was, was about food. And so the, the vegan stuff was thrown in uh, as a dietary add-on to a, lo a lot of things. Again, this is a Vegetarian um, International Voice uh, for Animals. This is a video from 2012. And again, we're, ta we're talking about relatively late on in terms of our history as a movement. So this is the story, really, that uh, the, the movement has very slowly embraced veganism as the central part of its claims making but the national groups in particular have been very reluctant to do it they were quite scared of the word vegan until relatively recently and now most of them have embraced it this is animal aid outreach and until very recently they have um publicized the veggie month as, as they call it so the the main picture is 1999 and then you've got kind of vegetarian kind of solutions to things like world hunger, those kind of issues. This is um, interesting in the sense that this is the kind of youth section of the uh, Animal Aid magazine. And in the youth section, they were much more likely to mention veganism. And I think that's possibly because they didn't think it was such a threat to their general membership. Um, but it, again, it was veggie months. And then you've got this little section in the middle. Think of taking the vegan pledge. If you read it again, it's very kind of diet orientated. Uh, this is outrage from when is that? Uh, 2000 and something. Uh, I think it might be 2006. Still talking about veggie months. You know, so it was a painful transition, if you like. This guidelines for talks on vegetarianism uh, comes from this little thing which is a, a guide that they used to send out to people giving their school talks and um, it says what is vegetarian what is veganism uh, and then they talk about the vegetarian and vegan diet and so it was always translated to that there was never any articulation that veganism was a radical philosophy it was all, always about food there was a real reluctance to really embrace it now, this is Ireland. This is 2001. So this was part of the foot and mouth problem that was going on at the time, which was big news at the time. But again, the claims making is vegetarian. It's kind of no more tears or tears are not enough. Uh, go vegetarian. 
Of course, when we go to uh, Peter and to Paul McCartney, then it was there's a big, strong emphasis on vegetarianism rather than veganism. Uh, McCartney has never uh, gone vegan, and um, he basically says that he kn he knows he should. And Stella, his daughter, keeps telling him he should, but he he, he never has and probably never will. So this is uh, Peter over the years. You've got Morrissey wanting people to go uh, vegetarian. And then you get some pretty problematic things, as you normally do with, with Peter. Jesus sort of vegetarian. Then you've got the kind of fat shaming bits at the top there, where you've got um, the big kind of male belly, as it were. And then save the whales, lose the blubber, go vegetarian with, with the, um, the obese uh, woman figure. And then the one to the left there is from their um, vegan love um, porn channel. At one point, uh, Peter had a, a porn channel. I think you had to be 18 plus uh, to get into it. And essentially, that was just um, them getting uh, women to do sexual things with vegetables, uh, uh, essentially. More up to date, we've got Meet His Murder Go Vegetarian, and that's uh, Rise Against. That's a uh, a band it's a straight edge band so that was interesting to me because straight edge is usually associated with veganism uh, but there is a kind of vegetarian version of it and so that might be what's going on here three three members of this band are um straight edge and so i assumed it their message would be vegan but it's translated to you know to uh, vegetarianism and then possibly the most shocking thing in terms of time this main part here it is from uh, three years ago, so 2019. So again, it's been a long, painful process for veganism to become the core, central part of our claims making, and there's been a lot, a lot of reluctance, reluctance in the movement uh, to do that. And whenever I've talked to relatively new vegans, they've been surprised by this history, that that it's been a history of resisting veganism rather than embr embracing it. But that is the history that we actually have. Uh, this is an interesting one. This is one of the Peter Lettuce ladies. This is Canada. And there was a counter demonstration by the local grassroots animal rights group, basically saying that, um, you know, sexism uh, isn't uh, activism. So if we move into academia, then I just picked out a few books that I've got on my shelf. Uh, the first one is Rainbow Out Thunder by Gary Francione. So that's 1996. No mention of veganism. Introduction to Animal Rights, Your Child or the Dog, that's 2000. And there's no mention of uh, veganism. In uh, the Melanie Joy book, uh, which a lot of people know, which is this one, there's no mention of veganism. Uh, vegetarianism is cited quite a lot. So if you look at the top there, that's the from the index. You've got lots and lots of references to vegetarianism uh, and none to veganism. And um, Melanie Joy said to AR Zone that that was a tactical thing to do, again, on the assumption that veganism was a scare word. And then on page 131, which I always uh, like to point out, uh, there's, a, there's a kind of footnote from Melanie herself. And we don't rule out uh, footnotes in the sense that, you know, think about Jeremy Bentham and the uh, important footnote that he produced. She said that um, she talked about vegans being pure vegetarians, but she basically says that she thinks that even vegans don't find eggs and milk products as disgusting as flesh. And she said that she suspects the reason for that is because you can procure eggs and dairy products without violence, which is an extraordinarily non-vegan thing to say. Now, this is really interesting. This is Francione, again, again, it's not a personal attack. He used to run something called the Animal Rights Clinic with his partner and Charlton. So this is 1996, and he he's talking here about going for a meal uh, with somebody, and uh, one person orders a, um, a burger, I think, and some he, he orders the veggie burger, I think. And so somebody says, well, are you still a, a vegetarian? And his answer to that was, Yes, I'm still very much a vegetarian. So this is a really interesting thing because Gary Francione says he went vegan in 1982 after reading Fettered Kingdoms by John Bryant, which is a good book. Uh, and so 14 years after going vegan, 
he was still self-identifying as a vegetarian, which from our point of view right now is quite an extraordinary thing to do. Um, you know, we, we probably wouldn't do that. Although, funny enough, I did see on social media, um, I think about two days ago, somebody saying that in social settings, they will say that they're vegetarian, but they won't say they're vegan. So perhaps it is a, an issue that continues. So then we bring into the real move towards veganism as the central part of the movement. And you could, if you wanted to date it from Earthlings, which is 2005, the Earthlings experience was also um, 2005. I, I always like to think that the first column there, you might not be able to see it, but it's it's got the Earthlings experience Dublin under the UK banner, which um, I hope nobody from Dublin has seen that, but uh, they, they probably wouldn't like it. So you've got the Earthlings experience. Now, Earthlings experience is what essentially AV, Anonymous for the Voiceless, kind of ripped off and, and professionalized, if you like. But AV has only been going since 2016. So again, you know, very recent in, in our times. And then finally, on our Whistle Stop uh, tour, we've got uh, uh, Go Vegan World. Uh, Go Vegan World was started in 2015, but that was Go Vegan Island in those days. And then from 2016, it's been Go Vegan World. And so I suppose most people are probably aware um, of their um, big, massive billboards. Th these are not photoshopped. Th these are actual uh, photographs of billboards. They, they also have a downloadable vegan guide, which is pretty good, and, and a really good kind of website. So this is a story, and apologies for rushing through it so quick, but um, this is a story of our movement. We do have a few people in the movement who suggest that these are the ones who want to bring back pressure campaigning. They suggest that we've been doing vegan outreach, and vegan education for decades and decades, and it, it hasn't done any good. Now, that claim is, is not correct in the sense that historically, vegan outreach, as we know it now, has just begun. You know, I always talk with, with Ronnie Lee. Uh, we were about to start a program together. He's celebrating his 50th year of, of a vegan. And he says, again, back in the 80s and 90s, they were all vegan, but they never talked about veganism. It wasn't a campaign uh, in those days. And so things have radically changed now. And veganism is now the moral baseline of the movement, but it's new. And so the big increase in veganism, as we've all probably experienced, is due to the this switch, I, I, I would suggest, which was led by the grassroots. I often say that the national groups were kind of drag kicking and screaming into veganism because the grassroots pushed for it. And I think we had to prove to them that veganism wasn't a scare word. And I think also um, commerce did it in the, in the sense that you ended up with Greggs and in Ireland, Apple Green, filling stations, as it were. They had big bill, billboards. It's here, the, ve the vegan sausage roll and this kind of stuff. That combination of all these vegan things coming through and the grassroots has finally convinced the national groups that veganism is not, is not a, a scare word. And I suppose if it was, it wouldn't be in all those packaging. They can quite easily put plant-based, but they put vegan. So I don't think it is, uh, you know, a scare word in that sense. So I think we've had a paradigm shift, but it's taken a long time um, to get to get here. But here we are now for the future. Let's see if I, I can close this down. What do I do? Yeah, sorry for the speed of all that, but I, we, I know that we were short on time, so I didn't want to take your break up too much. But if you do have any questions, um, I'm, I'm happy to take them.